It's Facebook Live time. Yay, I'm here with almost 100% of my voice. <laughs> oh, geez, still a little bit uh, funny sounding. Well, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. If we haven't met, hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, I am here on Facebook and um, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then also on YouTube because I post my Facebook Live videos on YouTube. Uh, so I'm here for my weekly live. Last week I had a really bad sore throat, so um, I am happy to report I'm doing so much better this week and just want to say thank you to those of you who chimed in and wished me well and told me to go to bed, <laughs> which um, I, I did. I was kind of out for about a week almost. Um, thought uh, exerting that little bit of energy last week to do the live, that little thing I did that on, on uh, last Thursday would, would be fine. And afterwards, I was so tired, I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> I was like, wow, that took a lot of energy to, to do it being sick. So anyway, welcome those of you who are arriving. Hi, Gail, hi, Sally. Um, I think I saw Pam arrived as well. So glad to have you here. So um, I have little in the way of announcements. One is, uh, well, and I have two projects today. Um, the, the one announcement I have is that the metallic inks and reinkers, the products that are in this product line, have been unavailable for a period of time. They are now back. So I'm back and the metallic inks are back. <laughs> oh, that was kind of perfect because I love my metallics, as you guys probably know. Hi, Laura Lee. Welcome. Okay, so the metallic inks are back. That's the one announcement today. Um, aside from that, I'm going to talk just a little about the products I'm using today because I am using a very wide range of products for the two projects I'm showing. Um, and I'm using a lot of papers and foils, uh, punches, and hardly any stamps. So let's just start with kind of showing you what I'm going to be using. Um, let's see. So I am going to be showing you a project using the... Um, Gleaming Ornaments Punch Pack, those two uh, ornament punches. And I am using the Mercury Glass Designer Acetate. Uh, I don't know, I think I may have sh shown you guys a sneak peek of this project at one point, but today I'm gonna go through and actually show you uh, how to make it. And th so the Mercury Glass is that product right there. Um, super fun, different kind of um, product. And then I'm also using the foils, so the, these uh, specialty foils, the Noble Peacock, comes in three colors, so that's the third one. So we're using some of those with the punches and then some of the regular, the foils that coordinate uh, the Pretty Peacock foils. So they are just so pretty and fun to play with. Um, and let's see what else. So I'm also, the, the punches coordinate with this set, the Christmas Gleaming Stamp Set. So I'm um, not actually using any of the stamps in it, but uh, it coordinates, so I thought you might like to know. And then I'm also using the Stylish Scrolls Embossing Folder, one of my absolute favorites these days. I'm using it all the time. Hi, Barb, welcome. Um, and another embossing folder, this is the Lace 3D Embossing Folder. And you can see I'm using just kind of a wide range of things, not necessarily anything that's uh, in a given suite. They're just kind of all over the map. And then I'm also using the Magnolia Memories and More uh, dies. I'm actually just using this bottom one right here, which I'll show you. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn the camera down and show you what I got. Here we go. Hi, Susan, welcome. Glad to have you here. Okay, so there are my two punches that I'm using and some of the pieces. So this is sort of a close up of the um, mercury glass acetate. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I think that's what I just called it. Um, and I'm gonna do some layering with this because I'm also using my uh, sparkle glimmer uh, paper. So. This is a what I think is a really super fun card. We made this card and the second project um, at my team um, gathering this past Tuesday. So if you are a team member who participated in our monthly challenge and are getting kits in the mail, there are a few of you out there, um, you're, this is how you can make your projects. <laughs> so uh, you can come back and look at this when the kits arrive. 
Okay, let's see. So, here we'll start. So I have um, dry embossed in the Stylish Scrolls a piece of this white and then just punched out one of the large ornaments from it. So that's where I use the Stylish Scrolls. And then I've also, well, let me just show you the project. Where did it go? Give you a sneak peek of what we're making. So that's the project. You guys may recognize it. So um, all these different products that I just showed you, you're going to see how I use them. So I punched out one of these little itty-bitty ornaments with that gorgeous blue foil. And then I positioned it in this embossing folder. So you see there's these little itty-bitty flowers. So I just um, placed it where I wanted it in there. I tried to get it centered and have it stay there, um, which was a little bit challenging. So it's maybe not quite exactly centered, but it's close. Um, and then just dry embossed it. So, you know, it gives me this really interesting, fun little ornament. And here is the ornament that I did, that I punched out with the stylish scrolls. And then I did one other ornament, but I'm gonna hold off and show you that just for in a second. Okay, so I've got my um, blueberry bushel card base, and I've taken some of my, the blue foil, which I think I mentioned is my absolute favorite. It's just this gorgeous kind of royal blue. Anybody else a fan of this pretty peacock foil? <laughs> How can you not be? That's what I have to say about it. <laughs> so I, I'm using a whole quarter sheet of it. So it's four by five and a quarter. And I couldn't bear to waste the center. So I took my rectangle shaped dies, my stitched rectangle shaped dies, and I just punched out the center. So I'll use this piece for something else later. And then this is where I used my Magnolia Memories die. So this is kind of the interesting thing. I took a piece of my, a strip, right? And then this is the die. Now, when you cut it off, you kind of think you're, you're um, I can't remember, I had it sort of upside down. But bottom line is, this is the cut and it's gonna, this is the space that you need. And I just centered it on my piece, which is four inches wide, put some washi tape on either side to get it positioned just so, and then die cut it out so that I get this piece right here. So um, anyway, that was, it's pretty straightforward. Just, if you try to do that, just make sure it's facing the right way, because the first time I did it, I did it reverse. I don't even know how to explain how I, what I did, but I didn't cut off the right piece. <laughs> so, um, Maybe try a scrap when you do it just to make sure you get it right. So now I have some adhesive on the back side of my little frame piece right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just attach it to the front of my card body. And let's see. I'm having a hard time seeing this very well because it's the blue on the blue. Should be right. So just like that. And then... I'm going to take my uh, sparkle glimmer paper and it has adhesive on the back also and just center it right there so I've got a nice bit of that blue foil framing. And because all you're showing is the eighth of an inch on either side, it doesn't actually really matter um, if the which you die cut in the center is actually centered. So now I'm actually justifying it down a little bit. I want the left and the right and the bottom to be the same size edge. I don't need to worry so much about the top because the top's gonna get covered by that little curtain or valance or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so there's my starting place. Um, oh, you use the foil a lot? Is that what you're saying, Gail? I, I believe that's what you mean. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, so now here's my mercury acetate. Now, there's not a lot that sticks to this uh, glimmer paper, as you guys probably know. So I'm gonna um, pull in my multi-purpose liquid glue, get that right side up, and um, where it's gonna be covered at the top, I'm just gonna put some of my white glue. And that's what uh, is gonna hold the acetate down primarily. 
And then on the back side, I am gonna actually strategically put a few little dabs of glue in the spots where it's solid silver and won't show through. Now you could try to use um, glue dots for this, but it doesn't always stick to the um, sparkle, to the glimmer paper, so that's why I am using my white glue. And I like to do it sparingly because I don't want it to ooze out or show up. So there we go. So I've got select spots. You probably can't even really see because the white spots probably look like the open spots, but believe me, it's there. And you don't need a lot. And it's just going to go directly over the um, sparkle glimmer paper. When I first made this design, I was just so excited because I just love how the glimmer paper shows through the openings of the mercury acetate. And I don't know how well you can see that, but it's really gorgeous in person. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see the, the sparkle, that iridescent sparkle of the shimmer paper in behind? Well, I hope so. Okay, so next, I've actually got adhesive on this little balance thing. You can see some of my glue oozed out, but this is gonna actually go all the way to the top of the blue foil. So I don't need to worry about it. It'll just help it, help to hold it down. So it's justified all the way at the top and it should go perfectly all the way left to right. Just like that. Now I don't want to get any of my glue on the foil because it doesn't really come off if you do that. So word to the wise, just be cautious that you try not to get it onto the gorgeous blue foil. Okay, so there we are. There's our starting place. Got a bunch of it all set. Okay, so now I got my three ornaments, two of which I have done parts of already. So wait on that one. So I'm just going to grab, now this is a retired twine or thread or whatever it is. It's just a silver. Uh, I couldn't find anything that looked quite... Um, as pretty and consistent with all this shimmer and shine that I have going on here, except for something retired. So I just went for the thing that was retired. So I'm gonna use a glue dot, make a little loop with my cord so that the two ends come together like that. And this is the easiest way I found, is just stick it right onto a glue dot. And then I can then just take this, the ornament, the top of the ornament, and stick it right on top of the glue dot. Let's just make sure it's about the right length. That should be good. Now that's not going to be enough to hold it. So what I'm going to do is put another glue dot to sandwich those little, the little cord between the two glue dots. And the other thing that will do is it's going to increase the height at that spot so it's starting to get as close to the height of the dimensionals um, so that they they stand up at the same height so i'm actually going to put yet another glue dot on here because i want it to be a little bit taller because i don't think it's going to be quite as tall as those dimensionals so there's the back of this one ornament that i've assembled and then I'm going to go ahead and put another glue dot. I'm sorry, another dimensional. Let's see what size will fit. I think I'm going to use a big one. And tack it down right in there. I'm trying to catch the very end of that cord just to add a little bit more hold onto the cord. So there's the back. Alrighty. So next, I'm going to just place my ornaments out where I want them to go. I have dimensionals on the back side of those two, and just like on the other one, I have glue dots sandwiching my cord. Same for my third ornament, which I haven't showed you yet. This is the, the pinnacle ornament, so I'm saving best for last <laughs> because I've already done some of the work on it. So on this one, look at that. Is that just gorgeous? It's like my favorite element of the whole thing, I think. <laughs> what do you guys think? So I used the Pretty Peacock 
um, rhinestones, the colored rhinestones, and I've used several different colors, the purples and the, the, that rich green and the blues, and then some just regular clear rhinestones as well. So um, that part I've already done, and then I'm just going to go ahead and arrange them where I want them. I kind of like to have them each at different heights, so I'll get my positioning. I think my cord's going to be acting a little finicky, but I will just have to deal with it. Okay, so I've got them placed where I want them. Now, just remove my backings. I kind of like to have that little one sort of nestled between the other two. And then you can see what I got back there. Some of the mini dimensionals, some big ones. I want it to have a good, good coverage uh, of dimensionals so it stays standing up. Okay, last but not least, my white one, and then I just need to add a few little rhinestones to my white ornament, and I am all set. Maybe that guy's going to just be, there, there you go, leaning against the other ornament. <laughs> so I, I'm a little off center, but it's pretty close. <laughs> Alrighty, so now, last but not least, finishing touch on this, pull in some of my rhinestones, and I'm just going to put three rhinestones onto my white ornament. It needs a little bit dress of dressing up, I think. You could do all kinds of fun things with those foil papers, um, both the ones with the patterns and the ones without. Um, it's just... You don't even need any stamps. It's almost blasphemous to say it, but <laughs> the paper is just so pretty. Okay, there we go. And then you add some embossing folders, and just how can you go wrong? So there is my finished card. So there we go. Pretty similar. <laughs> yes, fancy, I agree. It's very fancy. Um, Anyway, just super fun. This is the only thing I've m made with the mercury glass so far, but I think it's a pretty cool, fun product, and I just love these foil papers and rhinestones. So, uh, And then all I need, actually, is my inside piece. Last but not least. Got to have the finishing touch, and I decided to wait to put it in the center so I don't by accident you know, do it upside down like I have done in the past on videos. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, I'm gonna clear stuff away and I'm gonna show you the second project. The second project is actually, um, was also uh, one of the projects from the team event on Tuesday. And um, we agreed to do um, a 3D item, something that would be simple to make a lot of and it could be uh, something for a stocking stuffer or Maybe it's just a treat you give to a group of some kind, but something that would be fairly quick and easy to make uh, so you could make a lot of them. So we did one version in the, the team, and then um, I did a Christmas version for today's uh, video. So this is the one we made with the team. We used the uh, Follow Your Art, I think it's called, the designer paper, put some chocolate in the center, did a little uh, sentiment hang in there, and, of course, we used all different patterns, so each one was a little bit different. And I have seen these also with tea put in them as well. So here's the second one. This is the Christmas one, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make one of these in front of you so um, you can see on the side how it's constructed. But this is the super easy, quick, like it would be a perfect stocking stuffer or something just quick and easy to give to almost anybody. So bring my supplies in. So the theme for the swap, like I said, was to do a 3D thing, and it was kind of a, on the small side as swaps go, but we did have a few people who joined in um, on the team online, and 
people did some super fun little projects. I have a few of them, the ones for in-person people, um, to show you today. Um, so I'll show you those as soon as I finish demonstrating this. So basically, um, you're starting with a piece of 6 by 6 designer series paper. This is the, what is it called? The Night Before Christmas designer paper. So this one is as well. This is actually one of my favorites because it's got the cute little stockings in there. Um, hi, Mary. Nice to see you here. <laughs> That's the first I've seen your name come up. So anyway, this piece, it's just folded point to point. So it's in a triangle. And then I'm just going to put it into my uh, Simply Scored tool. And I'm scoring it at two and three quarters and five and three quarters, just like that. And then I'm going to put it on its side and I'm going to score at one half inch. Now when you do this part, I don't know if you guys can see well, it doesn't go all the way to the top, right? So it's a little bit hard to get it started. So you kind of have to dig in with your scoring tool a little bit, start with the groove, and then press the rest of it. See how it wants to slide off? <laughs> it's going to be on the bottom, so if it does slide off, it's not really a big deal, but just something to be aware of. So you're just scoring along that line. So the scoring part is super quick and easy. And then once the score lines are done, you just have to kind of find them. And <clears throat> so there's my two and three quarter and my five and three quarter. Burnish those creases. And uh, a lot of this paper is directional, so I had to pick some of the patterns in this paper that wouldn't, would be fine no matter how it got turned since all the pieces get folded in this. So I'm just going to burnish that. Burnish the other end. And then the middle one is folded up. So it's a, I like to say, it's a valley, mountain, valley. You guys heard that before in terms of the folds. So I saw a heart. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, somebody. Oh, and by the way, feel free to share. Uh, this video at any point, if you wish. Um, I love it when you share. Okay, so next, so it, as you can see, this comes together so quick and easy. I'm just using my regular hole punch to punch a hole at the top, like that. And uh, I'll be using these two punches, my one inch punch. You see, this is the old style <laughs> punch from way back when and the scallop uh, punch that's one and an eighth inches. That's gonna be for my tag. And this ribbon is, um, I think it's the, it's, that's the snowman suite. The name of it is slipping my mind right now, but feel free to chime in if you know which one I'm talking about. Um, but this is from that suite, it's pretty ribbon. This is actually from the Good Morning Magnolia suite. So I told you I'm using things from all over the catalog, holiday catalog, annual catalog, <laughs> everywhere. Okay, so do you guys recognize this? This is a flax ribbon. It's the white flax ribbon that's um, in the, um, I think it's just in the annual catalog. So when I did this version, you may have noticed that white string at the top. Well, that's done with this flax ribbon. Now, the designer paper that I'm using, this paper here, the... Uh, again, what is it called, Night Before Christmas, has a, an off-white or vanilla hue to it. So I couldn't use the white and make it look right. So I decided, well, why not color it? You guys probably saw that already when I had it in my hand. So I've colored it with my, let's see, what did I use? Old Olive, my dark Old Olive um, alcohol marker. And this is just the uh, most wonderful thing about neutral color ribbons is that you can pretty much color um, any color you want as long as you have an alcohol marker. Uh, it works much better than spraying it or immersing it in um, water because it just it dries really fast. So the alcohol allows it to dry really fast. So as you can see, I already did one end and now I'm just doing the other. You do have to do both sides of the ribbon if you really want to have good color coverage. And I'm just using the side of my um, blends. Now, this ribbon is a little bit rough, so it is kind of roughing up the tip of my uh, alcohol marker, so just beware. It might do that a little bit. 
Okay, so there is my colored ribbon. So next, I'm going to grab my scissors and just on one end, I'm going to cut down between two of the filaments. And if you end up, you know, cutting off one by accident, it's no big deal. Um, so, you know, it'll just make it, uh, one of them be shorter or whatever. But you're just getting it started by cutting between the two filaments. I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this, but um, before I pull them apart, because I want to make sure it stays together, I'm going to go into my the hole that I made before, get that set up, and then here's what happens when you pull it apart. So that one just came off. You pull it apart, you see the inside filaments right there. Just keep pulling them apart. And then when you get to the end, this is actually kind of fun. It's a little bit messy, but it's fun. So see all the icky <laughs> little stringy thing? Well, then you just whoop, just like that. And you have to make that sound effect too. What do you guys think? <laughs> it's pretty fun. Hi, Marsha. Welcome. I think I saw Kay as well. Welcome to you. So now I'm just going to do it on the other side, pulling my filaments apart. So like I said, you just have to cut up one of the, um, between two of the filaments there, and then you can pull them all off and then remove what's holding them together, which is this baby or whatever that is, my whoosh. All right. So now you got to tame them, get them all together. And all I'm going to do is just tie it together with some of this pretty, whatever it is, what's it called? Real red uh, curly ribbon. That's logical, right? Because it's pretty curly. And just make a nice tight tie there to make a knot. So what do you guys think of this? Isn't it cute and simple? Simple and quick. That's my kind of thing. Every once in a while, I like to do something quick. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to trim some of these off. I actually don't want them to all be the same height, so I'm kind of going to let them be a little bit off. And then I'll trim that off. Okay, we're in the home stretch. I'm almost done. And this is fun ribbon because it, it tends to kind of come unraveled a little bit. I kind of like it when it spreads apart. It's very fuzzy and fluffy. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Alrighty. So, on to the tag, which I have partially done already. So I'm using um, my Mossy Meadow cardstock. I've stamped the two from. Another nice sentiment for this would be, oh, what yum. Like, you know, it's chocolate. <laughs> Oh, you like my sound effect. Yay. <laughs> I like that. Um, so, and then I'm just going to use my 16th inch hole punch. And I don't even think we sell these anymore, although I think we did at one point. But who doesn't have hole punches around, right? And those little basic ones, you've got to have them. And then this is Mossy Meadow Twine. This is the twine that comes in the Mag Good Morning Magnolia suite. I'm pretty sure I got that right. So I'm just gonna cut off a piece and this is how I like to do this so I'm gonna tie a knot at the top and then now you can go around right here or you can go through the hole whichever way you want both ways works I'm going to go through this time. And then I'm going to open up the, the little opening right there, there, and then just stick it through. So now I could pull it taut and have it be hanging way low, or I can loosen it up and have it hang higher. It kind of just depends on where you want it to be. 
And then last but not least, grab some of your favorite chocolate flavors. I'm a dark chocolate lover. How about you guys? I love dark chocolate. I also love mint <laughs> and, you know, chocolate caramel. So these are some of my favorites. And once I have them around the house, it's a little bit hard not to eat them. But, you know, what the heck. Who else out there is a chocolate lover? Anybody else? <laughs> so I think the green looks pretty good with it. And then, uh, you know, this color looks pretty good. But, yeah, this color's probably the best one. So then, here we go. We're all set. Like I said, I've seen these done with a tea bag. The tea bag tends to come up higher, so you see a little bit less of the pattern. And uh, given the choice, I'm partial to chocolate over tea. Um, you could actually have chocolate on one side and tea on the other, and then it'd be perfect because you'd have tea with your chocolate. <laughs> no, there's there's a there's an idea. So. I did actually use a couple of stamps I do want to show you. So for this project, I used Itty Bitty Christmas, which has all these wonderful little sentiments. The ones that fit on my circle were the Oh What Yum and the Two From. And then on my other project, uh, I used some sentiments from the Itty Bitty Greetings. So the For You, and we had a few of them out that fit. I Miss You would probably fit. Hey friend, sort of nice for a little treat like this. So um, those little tiny sentiments come in handy for this kind of project. So what do you guys think? Dark chocolate? Oh, yes, Marsha's a dark chocolate lover. Everybody else in my family is a, is a, a, a milk chocolate lover. Well, that's not true actually. We're kind of equally divided. Um, my, my oldest daughter is a dark chocolate lover and Youngest daughter is a, um, and my husband are milk chocolate lovers. <laughs> anyway, love chocolate. Anyway, that, those are my projects today. My cute little projects. So fun. And, um, oh, I had to show you the other ones that my team, uh, my teammates gave, shared for their swap. And, of course, these are not the ones that were online, just the few that I have. Um, Oh, I see someone likes white chocolate or milk. <laughs> um, so this is, of course, a little tissue box holder, tissue box holder made with, um, what is that, the Mosaic Designer Series paper. It's a specialty paper, so it has a shine to it. But isn't that just the cutest little thing? Barb, Barb Menzel made this. Sometimes she's on here, so thank you, Barb. And then um, Wanda Williams made this one, um, made with the nested... The nested labels dies. That's such a mouthful. I never can get it right. And then she's used the beautiful, that gorgeous paper in the background. The name is slipping my mind right at the moment, but just super cute little um, little treats. So, um, so my question to you is: Would you like to receive cute little treats like that? You know, from someone anytime. <laughs> Why not? Right. <coughs> okay. Before I lose my voice for the evening. Because it's kind of going at the moment. Um, just uh, say thank you. I'm going to say thank you for being here today, for joining me either on the live or the replay on Facebook or YouTube. And as a reminder, I'm here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I will be back, same time, same channel, next Thursday. And that will be, I think it's November 3rd. I should really always look up the date, but it is next Thursday. So whatever that date is, I will be here with something fun to share. And I hope you'll join too. So um, thanks so much for spending some time with me today. And, and have a wonderful evening and happy crafting. Bye, everybody.